it was an opportunity for me to to be the only assistant coach and I knew that and so I knew that I was going to learn much more than I was going to be paid and that was going to be huge for me especially because my goal was to be a head coach and so if I can learn how to do everything if I can get in the trenches and get my hands dirty that's the easiest way to learn What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And before we even get into today's episode, I want to make sure that all of the ballers out there want to make sure that you're subscribed uh, by way of Apple Podcast and continue to help us spread stories, continue to help us uh, just expand the impact by subscribing and then rating and reviewing the podcast. So we appreciate that in advance. And now we want to welcome in, uh, we, we had the chance to have a conversation a few days ago offline and uh, just getting the opportunity to, to, to talk with um, this young lady who is a Houston area uh, basketball coach, high school basketball coach currently. Um, and she, she's been doing some phenomenal things, hearing about her story and just hearing uh, how she's just ultimately creating and cultivating her narrative and just making history in the process. Without further ado, I want to go ahead and welcome in Coach L. How are you doing today, Coach L? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Excellent. De- definitely excited to, to have you here. Um, so, Coach L, for those those who might not be familiar with you, if you if you wouldn't mind just sharing like a little snippet of, uh, about yourself and uh, just in case I missed anything else. Um, yeah, sure. So um, I am currently in Houston, Texas, but I'm not actually from Houston, Texas. Um, I'm from the East Coast. I moved down to Houston, Texas um, my sophomore year in high school. Uh, I was able to play at Side Fair High School, uh, which if anyone follows basketball, uh, women's basketball, you'll know that Side Fair High School um, was a very dominant um, school during a really for a certain span of time. Uh, my, my senior year in high school, we won the first state championship in school history. So we were able to kind of set a precedent and um, have some teams after us win the state championship as well. So I played there for three years. We were the number five team in the nation and the number one team in Texas. Um, after that, I was able to sign and go to school at North Texas, University of North Texas. And um, I did some great things there my freshman year. Um, broke some records as a true freshman Um, but I just found out that I wasn't happy Um, and I had my first knee surgery at that time. Um, I transferred to Tallahassee Community College uh, where I played there for one year and I was able to be highly recruited even higher than I was out of high school Um, so I got to go through the recruiting process twice which was a very uh, good learning experience for me. Um, after that time, I went on to play at the University of South Alabama, um, and unfortunately, my first uh, workout at South Alabama, I hurt my knee, so I had my second knee surgery, um, and I sat out my first year at South Alabama, so I became a red shirt. Um, after that, uh, the next year was my junior season. I was able to be an all-conference player in the Sunbelt Conference, um, and senior year you know was able to do some great things there and we we had a uh, a really good time at university of south alabama um after that i went directly into my coaching career i took a division two assistant coaching job in west virginia at west virginia wesleyan and what i will say is uh, taking a taking a job where you're able to be hands-on and learn a lot um really is going to teach you a lot. I mean, I accepted a job that paid $300 a month <laughs> at the division mm-hmm. two level. And I was the only assistant coach on staff. Uh, but it, you know, the, the lessons that I learned and, you know, everything that I got to soak up really paid me much more than that. Um, you know, I was able to learn how to be a video coordinator, how to be a recruiting coordinator. Um, I did everything, um, and so got thrown into the fire and figured out what I was doing. Um, after that, uh, I got offered to be a graduate assistant at University of Houston. Uh, coach Huey, who is still the head girls basketball coach at Houston, 
Um, he recruited me when he was at Rutgers when I was at Tallahassee Community College. So he called me up and said, hey, you know, I heard you want to come back to Houston. <laughs> and, and I was all for it. So I came back um, to University of Houston where I was getting my master's in human resource development. Um, my first year on staff, I was a graduate assistant. And my second year on staff, I got moved up to interim assistant coach. Um, so it was a great experience for me being able to be an assistant coach in the American Conference at that time and really go from the Division II level to the Division I level um, and just soak up all the information that I possibly could at that time. Um, and then after that, I accepted a job as a Division I assistant coach in the MAC at Canisius College way out in Buffalo, <laughs> New York. Um, <laughs> so I did that for a year and really got uh, my feet into recruiting in Canada. Um, I was still recruiting in Texas, but I really got into going across the border, getting into Toronto, getting into Quebec. Um, and that was a really awesome time for me. Got to travel a lot uh, and meet a lot of people up there. And, uh, um, and then I decided I was too far away from home and I came back. <laughs> So when I got back to Houston, um, you know, I was really contemplating what I was going to do. I knew I was going to coach. I just didn't know, um, you know, in what capacity. Uh, I had some friends of mine who I had been connected with since high school, and they had an AAU program, the Family, um, and they had asked me, you know, when you get out of coaching college, can you can you come coach with us? So I knew I'd given them my word to coach, um, but I didn't know that I'd end up coaching high school as well. Uh, my high school coach, Coach Amber Beek, she uh, told me that I could be really influential at the high school level. So I started to look for high school teaching jobs. Um, and I ended up at Side Springs High School uh, teaching an English class. And uh, Coach Benitez was the head boys coach at that time. He had an opening on his staff. And so he asked me if I wanted to interview for um, to be an assistant coach on his on the boys side. So I did that and I ended up taking that opportunity to uh, coach the freshman team um, and be a varsity assistant coach. Um, and we had a great season. We uh, made it to the playoffs and fell short to the team that went to the state tournament. Um, and then that second year, I was moved up to uh, the varsity assistant coach and the JV coach. So um, I did that for two years. You know, we won a, we were co-district champions. Mm. We did some good things there. Um, so, yeah, that really leads me up to where we are right now. Wow. <laughs> so there, so, I, so as, as you were talking, I was taking notes because I have this thing where I, I, like to, I like to keep like a little whiteboard. And uh, like I, I was just take, taking down some notes. The first thing I, I want to go back to, I want to re rewind and just volley back and forth with you on, was the fact of, the, the fact of getting paid three hundred dollars a month, like how, mm -hmm. how how did you really justify that? Like during during that time, because now you're looking back and you're saying, "I learned so much," you know, from that experience then, because hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Mm -hmm. But at that time, what was your mindset for you to justify being able to take three hundred dollars a month while taking on this particular job in this particular position? Um, for me, it was the opportunity. Um, if I didn't know that, you know, girls basketball or women's basketball collegiately, um, at certain levels, I really was not familiar with how much people received, you know, I didn't know how much people got paid to coach. Um, mm -hmm. I really didn't understand that until I got into the business. So for me, it was all about the opportunity to coach at the college level right out of college, um, you know, which doesn't always happen for everyone. Um, you know, some people have to work their way all the way up. But for me, you know, I'm somebody who's just graduating. I have no student loans. I've been playing on scholarship for <laughs> forever. Um, so the only bill that I actually had was a car note. So I was like, hey, this is an opportunity I can't pass up. Yes, it's in West Virginia. But at that point in time, all I knew that I wanted to do was coach. And so it was an opportunity for me to, to be the only assistant coach. And I knew that. And so I knew that I was going to learn much more than I was going to be paid. And that was going to be huge for me, especially because my goal was to be a head coach. And so 
if I can learn how to do everything, if I can get in the trenches and get my hands dirty, that's the easiest way to learn. It, for me, it's harder to sit back and try to look over somebody else's shoulder and ask them how to do this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. If I can put my feet in it and get down in the nitty gritty, I'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm definitely an active learner uh, myself. I have to be engaged in order to make sure that I take away um, something. The application has to be uh, has to be there for me. So so with you going from you said you went to West Virginia and then you said you were what in up in Buffalo and and moving around all these places like. What it so just, I'm, I'm trying to really get this question up in my mind because I'm just trying to think about just moving around to these different places so that one first and foremost you, you can make an impact but then also to, to further your career can you talk a little bit about that like just moving through different phases of your life as well as just different uh geographic locations ultimately to further a goal mm -hmm. uh, it's a very very tough thing to do um not to mention uh you know after when I graduated, I had my fourth and final surgery. So before I moved to West Virginia, I had a foot surgery that ended my career. Um, I was going to go and play overseas and pursue that route. So when I had that surgery, um, my whole mind frame, everything changed, my outlook of what I needed to do next. And um, I know I wanted to coach, but some part of me still wanted to play um mm. and it was it was a very very rough time for me because i knew that my career could very well be over it probably is over um and the easiest thing that i can do is stay connected to the college game and try to pour into somebody else um so with the transition i knew i was taking a big chance um and some part of me thought that moving away would make it easier mm. to focus on the job because staying connected would really, it would remind me of the fact that I didn't go where I wanted to go next. Mm. Um, you know, that'd be a constant reminder of people telling me, oh, I thought you were gonna do this. Oh, I thought you were gonna do that. Um, and some part of me, you know, because of the the mental struggle that comes along with surgeries. I mean, that was my fourth surgery. So the the mental struggle that I was going through of my confidence as a basketball player um, turned into, will I ever play again? Um, mm -hmm. And the only thing that I knew I could do was coach. And I went somewhere where I thought I can reinvent myself and I can just be a coach. I don't have to be the person who played <laughs> and then and then is trying to coach i can go somewhere else and just be um you know just start over new um and so it it is a it is a rough thing college athletics anyone who knows um you, you can pick up your life and move at the the drop of a hat um and i definitely experienced that i mean i experienced it in college for the most part I went from Dallas to Tallahassee to Mobile, Alabama, picked up from Mobile, and then I went right into West Virginia, Houston, and then Buffalo. So I, I know I tell, I tell people this all the time. I say basketball can take you places if you let it. Hmm. Uh, but I also have yet to shy away from an opportunity that I've been given. And even though it may seem hard, you know, to me, it, it was going to be worth it. And I've, I've not shied away from anything, you know, I've been asked to do because I know, you know, as a player, I was the same way. If somebody was going to ask me to do it. No one else wanted to do it. I'd still do it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one to take a chance. So I figured that was a big chance for me to take, but it was going to be one worth taking. Definitely, definitely. So where, so where do you desire for like for end game goal to, to be? What, what is it that, 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 that this road ultimately is, is leading to for you, Coach Hill? I want to be a head coach. Um, you know, I have zero idea what state <laughs> I would be in. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's all about wherever the opportunity comes, wherever God wants me to be is where I'm going to go. 
Um, you know, people ask me all the time what it is that I'm going to do. And I, I honestly tell them I don't know because I'm open to anything as long as, as it's the right opportunity. Um, but I do know I want to be a head coach. So somewhere along this way, <laughs> um, I will be. Uh, it's just a matter of whenever that opportunity presents itself. Understood. And then we're talking head coach in high school. We're talking head coach in college. We were talking men's program, women's program. <laughs> what is it? I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just asking. You know, at this point, I honestly, right now, I have no idea. Um, I, at one point, as soon as I graduated college, my goal was be a head coach, college basketball coach. Um, and when I transitioned to the high school level, my immediate goal was to be a high school head coach. Uh, but it was for the opportunity to transition back to the college level to still be a college head coach. So, um, you know, for me, it doesn't matter who I coach, whether it's boys or girls, it just matters that I coach. So, or, you know, whatever opportunity comes knocking, that's great. I mean, obviously, I've been on both sides. Um, but the opportunity to be able to lead um, is something that I really, really want to do. Understood, understood. And then where you you come off to me as as so confident, not cocky, but but just confident and really optimistic and and forward thinking. Like, wh wh have you always had this mindset? And is this from like was this instilled in you by like family or or what? What does that look like? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I will say that I was not always confident in myself. Um, I was, as a coach, I feel like I have always been confident in myself, um, surprisingly. And I don't know where it's come from. I think it's, it came from, possibly it came from my confidence as a player. Um, I was someone who was one way on the floor and completely different off the floor. I mean, on the floor, I was a leader, I was vocal, um, I was demanding, I was very strict of my teammates. Any of my teammates will tell you that I did not play any games when I got on that floor. If you were either ready to go or you weren't, and I was going to be <laughs> asking coach to get you a sub because I was about winning um, and I was about doing things the right way. And when I was off the floor, I was very quiet. I didn't talk to a lot of people. Um, you know, I was just um, focused, you know, because I spent, I spent a lot of time by myself um, just in rehab every day and in treatment mm -hmm. for my injuries. So I was someone who was so, so very focused, especially in college. I didn't really have too much of a social life. I spent my time in the training room, in treatment, focusing on academics. I was just that laser focused um, on school and, uh, you know, not very social. So my <laughs> when I transitioned to the basketball court I turned into a whole different person <laughs> um and the confidence that I exuded on the basketball court was not the same confidence I had when I walked off the floor um mm. I think that the confidence in my ability for sure comes from the fact that I know no one ever outworked me and I was confident in that um that was something that I used to to push myself and will myself back to the game when I was you know, learning how to walk again every off season. Um, mm. I literally was telling myself, nobody else is doing three hours of, of workouts today. Nobody else is in the pool doing workouts. Nobody else is lifting extra. Nobody else is studying film like you're studying film. So you may not be, you know, you may not be running right now with your teammates. You may not be able to get into uh, practice because I'm hurt, but no one else is spending eight hours a day doing what I'm doing to try to make up for the little bit of running that they're doing. You know, I was doing, I was putting in so many extra hours of learning my opponents and learning the game strictly because I wasn't allowed to be in practice. Uh, I can only practice for two days. I can only do activity for two days in a row because of my knee surgery. So I only practiced the day before the game and I played in the games in college. So it forced me to learn so much more about the game so much earlier in my career. I was, um, you know, acting as a coach my senior year while I was um, still on the team, you know? So for me, the confidence that I have now came from the struggle that I was 
that I brought myself through um, because that was something that, you know, I had the help of my trainers and everything else, but I did that alone. I did that miles away from home with nobody there with me. You know, it's, it's, um, it, it does something to you to wake up in a hospital bed by yourself. Mm. It does something to you. And having all of those surgeries and realizing that I was the only person that was going to pick myself up off the floor is really, um, you know, it's why I can, I can walk my walk and talk my talk now because I've done something that a lot of people haven't been able to do healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to do it and get a degree for free. (laughs) So um, I'm proud of myself for that. Um, And I definitely know all the work that I put in along the way um, grew me, um, stretched me, forced me to be who I am. And I'm I'm happy with who I am now. (laughs) Man. Wow. 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 I really appreciate you uh, just, just being, being honest enough and just vulnerable enough to, to, to share that with us. Cause I know injury is something that, that that's hard to deal with um, the time it happens, but then even post uh, post injury, I know a lot of times that there's, there's lasting or, or lingering effects, but uh, I'm, I'm just grateful to see you here and talk with you and uh, you sharing your story and you still being jubilant and, and joyful. <laughs> Uh, through the midst, so I, I, I def, definitely appreciate that. But you know, I, I got to ask you this: like for the person out there who's listening, and uh, the person out there who might be going through injury or might might have had an injury prone career, uh, and, and and we'll say they're they're a student athlete, maybe junior senior year, uh, and they just they they, they want to quit, but they need some encouragement. Like, what would you what would you say to that person? Um, Right, right now, if if you if you could talk to them and your from your lips to their ears right now, what would you say uh, to to that individual? Um, I would say don't quit. Um, I would say the reward that you're going to reap is so much more um, powerful than the pain that you're feeling right now. Um, you know that pain is going to go away and you just can't be broken by it. You know, I I tell people all the time who think they're tired, I said, you can't let tired win. Tired will subside. Mm. I can be tired, but it is not going to last forever. You know, you giving up on an opportunity to, you know, get a degree for free, that pain that regret that you'll look back in two years and say, I should have stayed and got my degree. I should have, you know, I should have forced myself to be stronger. I should have uh, forced myself to stay the course. That regret is going to resonate so much more with you than three months of the pain that you're going through right now, because it will go away. You just have to be strong enough to tolerate it right now in this moment. And I think that a lot of people, um, especially who, uh, you know, our mindset isn't to endure pain. It it really isn't of any kind, you know, as as humans, we feel a little bit pain and we just, we just throw the towel in. And for me, I knew that without this degree, there's, I mean, without the scholarship, there was no way in the world I was getting a degree. A degree. I knew in eighth grade, I had, <laughs> my mom said, there is not enough money for all six of these kids to go to college. So if you want to go to college, you need to find a way. And this was, basketball was my way. So for me, it didn't matter what I had to go through. There's going to be a point in time where you're looking at the reward that you're going to reap from this. And it is worth so much more. So whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you're fighting for, you have to know what that is. And when you signed up for, you know, whatever it is, basketball, football, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, when you signed up for it, you had a purpose in that. You believed in that. So you can't forget the purpose. You can't forget the reason why you started. There's a reason you started and hopefully you still feel that same way. 
through the doubt that you're feeling, through the confusion that you're feeling, you just need to make sure that you know you're going to come out on top. Now, you may not be the same player. That's mm -hmm. the thing that I had to look myself in the face and realize from year to year. I didn't know what kind of player I was going to be. And that's where, you know, my confidence was, was fading. I didn't know if I was still going to be an all-conference player. I didn't know if I was still going to be a starter every year like I had used to be. But I knew that I was going to play. And so I was just going to let the game guide me to where I needed to be next. So I wasn't going to try to force myself to be the player that I used to be. I was just going to work and develop to be a new player. Didn't matter what player it was. So if I turned out to be a passer instead of a shooter, then I turned out to be a passer. But I was going to make sure if I had to crawl, scratch, whatever, <laughs> I was going to get back to the floor. And if you love it the way you say you love it, then there's no reason that you shouldn't be going after it. Oh, my goodness. Coach L, you blessing us today. <laughs> You I'm blessing the saying. you blessing yeah. the Beyond the Ball podcast today. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, this is so rich. This this is so rich. So, Coach, I I got I got I to gotta circle back to you because you you said something real 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 deep. I mean, all of what you said was, was deep, and it, it was it was definitely really solid. But I I, I want to just just pick at this question because you said when you started there was a purpose and you have to basically continue to go to fulfill that purpose. What do you feel is your purpose? Um, I think my purpose when I was playing and um, my purpose was to make a difference. Um, and when I started to coach, my purpose was to impact lives through basketball. Um, you know, when I was playing, I chose to go to South Alabama I chose to play in the Sun Belt Conference, um, not because, you know, I felt like it was the best school that was recruiting me. It, you know, I had um, bigger schools recruiting me. I had Big East schools recruiting me, but I wanted to go somewhere where I could make a difference. And I felt like the bigger name schools were going to be that by themselves. They didn't need me. <laughs> They would go find someone else. I felt like I wanted to go somewhere where I can make a lasting impact immediately. And I wanted to go somewhere that um, I knew what I brought to the table would be um, something significant. Um, and now that I coach, I, you know, I just want to reach as many people as possible. I want them to understand life. I feel like we're teaching life through basketball. I'm not teaching basketball. You know, me teaching them how to get through a hard practice, me teaching them how to get through strength conditioning, um, you know, the, the length of a six-month season, how to come back from games, you know, when you're down, when you're out. All of that is just teaching you how to be a, a successful individual when you get on the outside. That's all that is because no one is going to teach you how to get up and go to work and pay your bills. Nobody's going to teach you how to be unemployed and go find a job. I, we can't teach you that but we've taught you the mental toughness we've given you the tools that you needed through basketball you know when you had to earn your spot we teach we teach all of those things and the fact that we we're able to teach it through basketball you know giving a a, a reward um for the lessons that we teach every single day that carries over um, and so when you're teaching it the right way, when you're holding kids accountable, when you're making sure they learn these life lessons early, um, you know, for me, I'm successful if they leave me and they can go be successful. If they leave me and they understand how, and really how to get through their first semester of college without quitting, you know, if it was hard enough when they were with me, then it's going to be a breeze when they get to college, you know, um, because you know, I tell my kids all the time, I know that everyone's not going to be a college basketball player. You might leave me in high school and you're just going to be a regular student, but you have learned how to persevere. You've learned how to be resilient. You've learned mental toughness and that should make you a successful human being in business, whatever it is that you decided that you want to do. So um, it's really just to have an impact um, is my immediate purpose now. <laughs> 
teaching life through basketball. I wrote that down. Oh my goodness. That's going to be the title of this episode. That's so good. Oh my goodness. This is so good. Coach Al, this is, this is so good. This, this, this really is. We're going to have to, we're gonna have to do like a, 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 we're going to have to circle back and do like another episode uh, later. And you just, you know, just, just catch up and, you know, you just update us on your life and, and how you're continuing to teach life through basketball. Um, but I want to I want to now transition. Want to want to uh, definitely uh, get to the like I told you before the the fun part. Um, mm-hmm. Now th- th- even though this has been this has been uh, what, what do they call it edutainment because it's been <laughs> educational yeah. and and definitely uh, e- entertaining. Um, but with the with the two minute drill, what we do is uh, I just run you through a few rapid fire questions and then you just you know give your answers. Kind of fun and just. You know, just just have a little bit of fun. So, are you ready, Coach L? Yeah, I'm ready. Two minute drill time starts now. Favorite food? Uh, salmon. How do you like it prepared? Baked. <laughs> oh, okay. That's healthy. Yeah. That's healthy. Okay. Uh, what, what's what's your Netflix? Your, your go to Netflix show? Right now. Ozark. <laughs> oh, you haven't you haven't, you haven't finished it yet? Um, about to be finished. <laughs> oh, okay. Once you finish it, you got to watch uh, Money Heist. Um, Saw that too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So good. So good. Uh, favorite favorite team? On what level? Uh, oh, okay. We'll say NBA, NBA or WNBA. Oh, gosh. Okay. For WNBA, I'm going to go with the Sparks because my teammates, Nick and Janae Aguil McKay, they're on the Sparks. Uh, <laughs> NBA, I don't exactly have a favorite team. Uh, I will say that I love watching the Spurs and the Warriors play because I like offense that moves. Especially the Spurs. I mean, they run through the offense. Okay, I yes. got you. I got you. Uh, what 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 would be your what would be your go to podcast? Ooh, um. I don't know. I have a couple of like different just you can name uh, both of them or a couple of them. It's fine. Well, I'm not sh- I listen to um, a podcast that just features Michael Todd's sermons. So like when I when I um, ride my bike, I listen to sermons on the podcast, but that's about the only podcast I listen to. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, the last book you read? Um, Choice Not Chance. Uh, Joan P. McCalley, the former Duke coach. Kara Lawson just got the job. Whoop, whoop. Congratulations, mm, Kara Lawson. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And then last question, what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? One tip. Um, do what's best for you. Do what's most comfortable for you. Um, and don't give up on that and don't regret it. Mm. That's good. Do what's best for you. Do what's most comfortable for you. Mm-hmm. Don't give up and don't regret it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. It, it, it's, it's a process being a student athlete <laughs> at the high school level, at the college level. Um, you know, a lot of student athletes make decisions that they're sometimes not comfortable with because of the pressure they're feeling, especially in recruitment. So I, I say that's why I say do what's most comfortable. And then sometimes you got to make the hard decisions. So mm, yeah. you can't look back on them and say, what if? Don't regret the decision you made. Put your head down and keep moving forward. There it is. There it is. <laughs> From the Coach L. Coach L, where, 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 can everybody, uh, where can everybody find you and how people can, can follow you and, and get connected with you? Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Coach L um, underscore. So you can find me on either one of those or just search for Monsa L um, and Facebook as well. And then it's Coach underscore and then E-L. Yes, Coach L E-L. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha, gotcha. Well, Coach L, I, I definitely uh, appreciate you taking the time. Like I said, this this is rich. I really enjoyed this. Um, man, this, this is going to end my afternoon on a high note. So... <laughs> I de- definitely appreciate you taking the time to to hang out with us today and uh, just just sharing your your wisdom, sharing your expertise, and, and sharing your story. I appreciate you having me. It was fun. <laughs> certainly, certainly. And ballers, everyone out there, once again, make sure that if you have not hit the subscribe button, subscribe on Apple Podcast, and help us continue to to get out. Uh, excellent stories and, and, and excellent insight like Coach L shared today by subscribing and, and leaving a helpful review. 
and then of course you can uh, follow us on Instagram at Go Beyond the Ball. I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball. Thank you.